raised. Thank you for your service and sacrifice. Also joining us this morning is Iwo Jima survivor and United States Marine veteran, Mr. Edward Vincek. Thank you, sir, for your valor. We are honored and humbled to have several Gold Star families with us today. Would you please rise? Ladies and gentlemen, you have our sincerest respect and we pledge to remember your service member and their sacrifices as we execute our Navy's call to action. Would all veterans and active duty service members please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service. We are also honored to recognize our distinguished guests the 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Alexander Milley, United States Army. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone their transformation from silent hulls to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship alive. In just a few moments, the U.S. Fleet Forces Band will render honors to the Honorable Joe Manchin. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors the presentation of the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Captain Brian Waite, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, Command Chaplain, Naval Surface Forces Atlantic. Dr. Chuck Harding, Invocation Chaplain. Commander Gregory Mitchell, United States Navy, Expeditionary Sea Base Program Manager's Representative, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Bath Detachment, San Diego. Mr. Timothy Roberts, Program Manager, Strategic and Theater Sea Lift. Program Executive Office Ships. Miss Mary Ellen Baldwin, Chair, USS Herschel Woody Williams Commissioning Committee. Mr. Dennis Dubard, Director of Government Relations, General Dynamics, NASCO. Captain George McCarthy, United States Merchant Marine, Master, USNS Herschel Woody Williams. The Honorable Kenneth C. Alexander, Mayor, City of Norfolk, Virginia. Rear Admiral Michael Wetlaufer, United States Navy, Commander, Military Sea Lift Command. Rear Admiral Roy Kitchener, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Surface Forces, Atlantic Fleet. Rear Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Office Ships. Mr. Andrew Hypley, Director of Navy Staff. The Honorable James Gertz, Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Research Development and Acquisition.
General David Berger, United States Marine Corps, 38th Commandant of the United States Marine Corps. The Honorable Elaine Luria, United States Representative, Commonwealth of Virginia's 2nd District. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsors, Miss Travi Ross and Miss Tracy Ross, daughter of Woody Williams, escorted today by Senior Chief Jeremy K. Bird, United States Navy, Herschel Woody Williams, Command Senior Chief, Blue Crew, and Senior Chief Tiffany Simpson, United States Navy, Herschel Woody Williams, Command Senior Chief, Gold Crew. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship's namesake, Chief Ward Officer 4, Herschel W. Williams, United States Marine Corps, retired, escorted by Samuel Horde, United States Navy Officer in Charge, USS Herschel Woody Williams Gold Crew. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Joe Manchin, United States Senator, State of West Virginia. Escorted today by Captain David Gray, United States Navy. Herschel Woody Williams, Prospective Commanding Officer. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Joe Manchin. Platform and salute. Platform, ready, two. Advance the colors.
Retire the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Chuck Harding will now deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence this morning and we thank you for your heaven rescued land. We thank you for your blessings of liberty upon our nation and for our military who are the guardians of that liberty. We give thanks for the technology which you have placed in the mind of man to design and develop such a ship as this and those who built it. We are grateful for all those who worked tenaciously to name this ship the United States Herschel Woody Williams and for his national patriotism as he is a national treasure and the embodiment of courage, compassion, duty, and dignity. We know that Father Woody's wife Ruby is with you looking over the battlements of heaven on this her earthly birthday. Happy birthday Ruby. We pray for the captain and the crew who will maintain and operate this ship in its duty to seek peace and to keep peace. We pray in their service that they will see your works and wonders in the deep. Our eternal Father, who are strong to save, we pray for a hedge of protection around them. And we know, Lord, that you are the one that raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves thereof, but you also make the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. We also pray for the families, while they are separated by time and distance, that you will watch over them. We do pray, Father, for your power, provision, and protection upon the USS Herschel Woody Williams and that she, her captain and crew, will serve our nation with the same distinction in duty and dignity, courage and compassion 
as her namesake. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Harding. We would like to thank Miss Janine Stang, the U.S. Fleet Forces Band, the Naval Station Norfolk Color Guard, and Saluting Battery for their support this morning. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, Parade Rest! Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kenneth Alexander. Chief Warrant Officer Woody Williams, Miss Travy Ross, Miss Tracy Ross, U.S. Senator Joe Manchin, Congresswoman Elaine Loria, General Mark Milley, General David Berger, Assistant Secretary James Gertz, Mr. Andrew Hypley, Real Admiral William Galenus, Rear Admiral Roy Kitchener, Mr. Dennis DeBird, Ms. Mary Ellen Baldwin, Mr. Timothy Roberts, Commander Gregory Mitchell, Captain George McCarthy, Captain David Gray, Admirals, Generals, Officers and Crew of the soon-to-be United States ship Herschel Woody Williams, distinguished guests, family and friends, Good morning and welcome to Norfolk. Uh, thank you. On behalf of a very grateful city, city council, and the citizens of Norfolk, I am privileged to welcome you to this historic event, the commissioning of our newest Navy Expeditionary Sea Base ship in downtown Norfolk. Norfolk is proud to celebrate bringing the USS Herschel Woody Williams to life and contributing to our rich military history and heritage. Across the pier is the USS Wisconsin, which earned its third of five battle stars, providing far support to the Iwo Jima campaign, where then Corporal Herschel Woody Williams fought so violently, earning him the Medal of Honor. We are very grateful to Chief Warrant Officer Williams for his extreme courage and faithful service, and to know that the ship's namesake will serve as an example for the officers and crew on this fine ship. Congratulations, Captain McCarthy, Captain Gray, the officers and crew, as you embark on this new journey in the ship's life. Now, I look forward to continuing this ceremonial event steeped in rich naval tradition. Thank you, good morning, and welcome to Norfolk. Thank you, Mayor Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dennis Dubard. Good morning. So I have to tell you that I failed in one of my missions coming here this day because I'm from San Diego where this fine ship was built and I tried to bring some warm weather with me. I'm sorry, but I, I failed miserably. So on behalf of the over 4,000 men and women of General Dynamics NASCO, it's my honor to represent them today at this commissioning ceremony. And I have to say, it feels great to be back aboard this ship. The NASCO team is truly honored and humbled to have built this ship. Our team consists of some of the most experienced shipbuilders in America, and we are justifiably proud of every ship we build and every ship that we repair. But this one is special because of the namesake and what he represents as an American. Today, we're not only commissioning a ship, but we are honoring Woody for his lifetime of service. Woody has dedicated countless hours to speaking to veterans groups, children's groups, church and civic groups. The mission he took upon himself reminds generations of Americans of the sacrifice endured by so many to protect freedom. 
Woody's story demonstrates true American ideals of courage, sacrifice, patriotism, citizenship, integrity, and commitment. Woody, we are honored to have you with us here today and thankful for your lifetime of service to our country. So in August of 2016, we laid the keel for this ship, and we told Woody that we would work very, very hard to make this ship worthy of his name, wherever it sails. So let me tell you why this ship is worthy of the name Herschel Woody Williams. This ship's remarkable capabilities will allow our servicemen and women to carry out missions including air mine countermeasures, counter piracy operations, maritime security operations, humanitarian aid and disaster relief missions, special operations, and Marine Corps crisis response. The ship is designed to support the MH-53 and MH-60 helicopters, as well as the MV-22 tilt rotor, as well as unmanned drones and unmanned surface and subsurface vehicles. She's equipped with a flight deck and a forward accommodation that can support over 250 personnel. So like its namesake, the ship is also a force multiplier. She can respond more quickly and effectively to crisis and can reduce demand on large surface combatants. The ship is capable, inherently flexible, and perhaps most importantly, in an age of constrained budgets, affordable. In every sense, a force multiplier. So today, we're christening not just a ship, but it's the embodiment of American unity and purpose, a beacon of freedom and the hope to those in need around the world. To Captain Gray, and the future crew of the USS Herschel Woody Williams, the men and women of General Dynamics NASCO wish you fair winds and following seas. And may God bless this ship and all who sail upon her. Peace we keep, peace we seek. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dubard. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Roy Kitchener. everybody. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here representing the surface fleet today. Senators Manchin, Pito, Congresswoman Luria, Chairman Milley, Commandant Berger, generals, admirals, of course, Warrant Officer Woody Williams. Thank you for all your support today. Thank you for all you've done and thank you for what we have to look forward to in the future. A special thanks again to Chief Warrant Officer Woody Williams, Corporal Kyle Carpenter, Colonel James P. Fleming, Colonel Walter J. Marm, Master Chief Soblinski, Staff Sergeant Salvatore Junta, and all Medal of Honor recipients are here today and throughout our great country. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifices. It's truly an honor to be with you all here today. As the Atlantic Force Surface Type Commander, I spent a lot of times walking around ships, talking to sailors, and the steady drumbeat I talk about and I keep is for our need for our ships to be combat ready and battle minded. What you see here today represents the finest in aviation facilities, accommodations, equipment staging, and command and control. Make no mistake, this ship, just as the Medal of Honor was winners with us today and all our sailors and Marines and servicemen, was built in an ever volatile world with the capacity to bring the fight to the enemy and to win on their shores. Our strategic advantage over our adversaries remains our people and our combat capability. And when it comes to enhanced naval integration, we're all pretty excited to get Herschel Woody Williams into the fight and out to sea. Much like Chief Warrant Officer Williams, this ship's essential to the projection of our sea power, the support of our forces ashore, and the inevitable victory of our Navy and Marine Corps forces. The ship, by design, is intended to go over the horizon and in harm's way. And I'm confident they will do so combat ready and battle minded. It is peace we seek and peace we will keep. Captain Gray, fair winds, stay ready, keep your cutlass sharp. Thank you. Thank you, Rear Admiral Kitchener. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Andrew Hypley.
Good morning. What a great day to be in Norfolk, Virginia. To all the dignitaries and friends and families of the Navy Marine Corps team, thank you all for being here today. Above, above all else, today is about honoring the last remaining Marine Corps World War II Medal of Honor recipient, Woody Williams. I'm delighted to represent Admiral Mike Gilday, our Chief of Naval Operations at this historic event. I know he would much rather be here with you, but his loss is my gain. As a retired Marine and son of a World War II Navy veteran, this sacred ceremony, as I am sure it is for many of you, is personal. There's nothing more right than to recognize a true American hero, honoring our entire greatest generation, and realize once again that we can never, ever repay them for their selfless contributions to our country. Now, back in D.C., we sometimes refer to the integrated naval force as if it were something new, after nearly 20 years of separation during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. But Woody and all of those who fought in the Atlantic and Pacific theaters of the Second World War know more than we ever will about integration. I think they would tell you it's about courage, it's about grit, logistics across thousands of miles of ocean, trust between brothers and sisters of the Naval Service, and above all else, about love. Woody and his shipmates and fellow Marines here today who fought one of the most consequential wars in our nation's history are wiser than all of us. We will always have the fight they fought as a Navy and Marine Corps team that was, to paraphrase an old song, integrated before integration was cool. They integrated because our nation and our way of life depended upon it. What we know today is the victory in the Pacific, one of the proudest moments of our history, might seem inevitable to us, but to Woody and all of those who fought there, it was never inevitable. It was as close a run as a thing as America has ever seen, probably going back to the Revolutionary War. And most importantly, as history, as historians will tell you, the fact that our Navy and Marine Corps worked together and the Army and Navy of Japan did not was a main factor in our victory. The war in the Pacific theater highlighted the power of an integrated Navy Marine Corps team. Fighting some of the fiercest battles of World War II, the Navy Marine Corps team defeated a juggernaut few imagined possible at the start of the war. The ship before you represents and manifests the reaffirmment of the commitment of our Navy Marine Corps leadership once again to one team, one fight. The USS Herschel Woody Williams will support the many missions that you heard here today. To the crew of the USS Woody Williams, I challenge you to develop and maintain the battle mindset of your namesake. Fighting against a determined foe in conditions described as a nightmare in hell, the Navy Marine Corps team effort was forever captured in the iconic flag raising on Mount Suribachi and the remarkable courage described by Admiral Nimitz as uncommon valor was a common virtue. I also charge you to accomplish the CNO's mission one for every sailor, the operational readiness of today's Navy. Our nation expects a Navy Marine Corps team that is ready to win across the full range of military operations. This ship will play an important role in that mission. Ultimately, the success of this ship will depend on the talented sailors and civilians who crew her maintain her and make sure she's ready for the fight. I have no doubt you will rise to the occasion. May God bless the USS Herschel Woody Williams and all who shall sail in her. May God bless this United States of America. Semper Fidelis, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hypley. Ladies and gentlemen, General David Berger, Good morning. Uh, if you'll allow me, I'm going to break protocol here a bit and not go through individually all of the distinguished folks that were already the mayor already mentioned them. But I would like to I would like to highlight two groups. First, uh, last night I mentioned when you're in a room with one recipient of a Medal of Honor, it's a pretty 
awesome occasion. When you're in a place where there's multiple ones, it's overwhelming. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in that place this morning. Please join me in recognizing the multiple Medal of Honor recipients. The second group was mentioned uh, earlier also, but I would like to highlight them, and they are Gold Star families. And the reason I mention that is uh, although we get to wear the cloth of our nation, we get awards, we get recognized, we get thanked publicly, Gold Star families are really the quiet backbone of our United States military. And we have a lot of Gold Star families here this morning. Please, ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking them too, the Gold Star families. Yesterday I told Woody this is three weekends in a row where Don and I have been in an event with Woody, but I promise you next weekend you don't have to worry about the Commandant of the Marine Corps. I won't bother you next weekend, Woody. Uh, I think we have two purposes here this morning. Uh, first, we're going to, of course, honor the life and legacy of Herschel Woody Williams, and also the second, to commission this great ship and have her join our fleet. First of all, Corporal Williams and Chief Warrant Officer. This is the 75th anniversary this year of the Battle of Iwo Jima. And over the past few weeks, as the Chairman knows and the Marines here know, we've had the opportunity to commemorate that battle in a, in a number of events and to meet a bunch of World War II veterans. And there's nothing like connecting with those veterans of the greatest generation. It makes you walk a little bit taller, feel a little bit prouder. It's not lost to me, as you and I sit here this morning, that we're also commemorating that 75th anniversary. And on this day, March the 7th, 1945, Corporal Williams was, of course, on that island. It was two weeks after his heroic events where he earned the Medal of Honor, but of course, two weeks later, he was still fighting. He was continuing to endure what those who have been to combat know as the highs and low. And no one in this audience, unless you were on that island, could even begin to fathom, locked in a battle of life and death, fighting for every inch of that eight square miles on that island. The day prior, which would have been yesterday, March the 6th, Corporal Williams was wounded. He took shrapnel in his leg. And later he would be, of course, awarded the Purple Heart for. He should have been evacuated. He refused evacuation the day prior. Of course, we all know why, right? He was not going to abandon his Marines and his team. He spent last night on that island, when, re when reinforcements were brought ashore, Corporal Williams told him what combat was going to be like for them. Even though he was wounded, even though they told him he had to be medevac, he refused. He, he helped them get prepared for the following morning, which would have been right now while we're sitting here. So 75 years ago, instead of being evacuated, a wounded Corporal Williams started the morning in the attack with his Marines. He remained in that fight for nine more days, although wounded, until on 16 March when they left. His whole unit left. He would not leave without his unit. I think that tells you pretty much all you need to know about Woody Williams and how he has lived his entire life. That exemplifies Semper Fidelis, always faithful. He would not leave his Marines, and we are grateful this morning to continue to honor his life and his legacy. Well, that's Woody. How about this ship, the platform? 
I think it's fitting this morning that we pass on that legacy by commissioning the USS Herschel Woody Williams, imbuing the hull and, his, and her crew with the namesake of just a great American. As, uh, the, as uh, was already mentioned, the Chief of Naval Operations and I are really excited to see this new addition to the fleet. This is an ESB, an Expeditionary Sea Base. Just think about that for a minute. An Expeditionary Sea Base. This is a floating, moving island. Two things stand out when you're, when you're sitting on this ship and you know what she can do, and that's versatility and affordability. This ship, purpose-built to be versatile, flexible, it's modular. You can see it when you walk around it today has a huge mission bay, a big flight deck right above us, where, as spoken, where you can land helicopters, take off, has, has equipment staging support on board. You can't see it, but there's command and control and radios and computers and all kind of stuff on this ship like you would need to fight a ship. This ship, as mentioned before, we're going to launch unmanned platforms off of this ship when we operate. Unmanned vessels, unmanned aircraft. Second part is this ship is a step in the right direction for what we can afford as a nation. It's a draft office civilian design, but modified by naval architects to make a fighting ship out of it. This is how the Navy and the Marine Corps can work with industry to produce what we need to protect our country. We're all taxpayers sitting here. I think that means a lot. This ship is affordable, and it's a war fighting platform. To the commissioning crew and the plank holders, the CNO and I are, and the chairman are going to be watching this ship. We're going to be taking notes. We're going to need more ships like this that are versatile and that we can afford in the future. And to Woody Williams, I know, I know you take great pride, as does the senator, that you've got your name on the side of a National Guard armory, the only Marine to have his name on the side of a National Guard armory up in, up in West Virginia. But we would like to think his name looks pretty damn good on the side of this ship also. What are your fellow Marines, sailors? They're going to carry your namesake with pride, Semper Fidelis, Marine. Thank you, General Berger. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Elaine Luria. Good morning. And I would say that the sentiment that I have here today is I'm truly humbled. Humbled to be here in the presence of Warren Officer Williams and the other Medal of Honor members, veterans, who have given so much to our country. And I find it so fitting that this ship be named after Warren Officer Woody Williams. I took a minute to reflect and reflect on the Battle of Iwo Jima and how important that was as Iwo Jima was seen to be a staging point for our continued battle in the Pacific. And this ship, which is a staging base for today's Navy and Marine Corps and where the fight will take it around the world, is a staging base named after a hero from that battle of Iwo Jima. I'm also incredibly honored and privileged as we welcome you to Norfolk along with Mayor Alexander. That Norfolk is the staging base. We've celebrated our 100 years of Naval Station Norfolk recently, and we are truly the staging base for our naval forces that deploy around the world. Again, I'm truly humbled to be here today to welcome you to Norfolk and to join in celebrating the great life and heroism and sacrifice that Warren Officer Williams made um, and to celebrate this ship that will carry his name for our next generation of sailors and Marines. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Luria. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable James Gertz. Good morning. It's been an amazing day of uh, celebrating Woody, his fighting spirit, and his friendship. 
Congratulations to all of you. You've made it to the seventh inning stretch. In just a few minutes, we're going to bring this wonderful ship to life. 800 pounds of steel, flexibility, fighting machine, and all that will be winner. To Chief Warrant Officer Woody Williams, our ship sponsors, distinguished platform guests, fellow veterans, Medal of Honor recipients, Gold Star families, fellow Americans, thank you for joining us to this great ceremony today. It's always good to be back in Norfolk, one, because it's not Washington, D.C., uh, and two, because it's a, uh, it is a bastion of the strength of our Navy and Marine Corps team. It has been, and it will continue to be. And adding this ship to the fleet here will be a great addition. Participating in these ceremonies is one of the funnest things I get to do, the most heartwarming thing, because it represents two great ideals of our country, teamwork and commitment. The teamwork and commitment of all the folks on Iwo Jima with Woody, the teamwork and commitment of our shipbuilders, our suppliers, Congress, the Navy, our program teams in America, all working together to build the Navy the nation needs. It's an exciting time in the Navy. Right now we've got 78 ships under contract and 46 of them under construction. In the next six weeks, we'll have two more ceremonies like this where we'll bring two new nuclear-powered attack submarines to the fleet. We're all working hard to build the Navy the nation needs with the adaptability, the flexibility, the affordability to deal with the uncertainty of the times ahead. And while we've given this great ship um, tremendous capabilities, we've also given it a secret weapon, actually two secret weapons, which are on no other ship in the world. That's our two sponsors. Thank you both for sponsoring this ship. It will be a part of this ship forever. And I thank you for all you do to make sure we are all working together to build the Navy the nation needs. Thank you. With this well-trained crew, the support of the sponsors, the support of all the Marines here, past, present, and future, the American people, I'm confident that Woody Williams, like its namesake, will serve our country, serve it and protect it without hesitation, will overcome adversity, and will allow us to win. God bless the ship, her crew, their families, and God bless the United States of America. Now it's my distinct honor, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce today's keynote speaker, Senator Manchin of West Virginia. Senator Manchin's work on behalf of our military, our veterans, and our entire country has been unwavering. I can think of no more appropriate person to serve as our keynote speaker on a great day for our Navy and Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Senator Manchin as our principal speaker. Thank you so much, and it's such an honor to be here with my dear friend, Woody Williams. And for all of you to be here is absolutely a tremendous honor, too. Uh, to Tracy and to Travi and to the entire uh, Williams family, uh, and uh, to uh, my friend, uh, Joint Ch uh, Chief of Staff, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, and to General David Berger and all of the other, to uh, a true American, a true patriot, uh, and a service member herself for many, many years, retired Congresswoman Elaine Laurie. It's good to be with her today and her district, and it's always good to uh, see all the work that she's been doing. To all the Congressional Medal of Honor uh, recipients, God bless you for what you have done for our country and the way you have led a wonderful, wonderful uh, honor for all of us. Uh, to all the Marines, all the sailors, to all the veterans, and especially the veterans' families, Thank you for the service you've given us and the freedom I've been able to enjoy in my family because of the sacrifices that you all have made. I appreciate that very much. Um, to today, as we said, is Ruby Williams would have been her birthday today. They were married for 62 years, and I know that she's looking down from heaven to mount, all of us with a smile. General Berger just said that uh, with this wonderful ship being named after this unbelievable human being, uh, that he's also had a National Guard armory in West Virginia named after him also. I want you to know he also has a veterans hospital named after him just recently. And there's not a more deserving person that served every veteran in his entire life. I'm proud to be from West Virginia. I was born and raised 
about 10 miles from where Woody was born and raised in the hills and mountains of West Virginia. And I've said, uh, you have to know, you've always, you already heard about heroics of Woody. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the reason he is the person he is. Uh, we're all a product of our environment. You are who you are by where you was raised, who raised you, and how they raised you. It's who we are. He was raised in a little uh, area called uh, Quietdale. He was raised in a mining area, but he was on a little farm. And, uh, and for him to have what's instilled into him, he has a never, never quit attitude. He's never going to give up, never quits never backs down. There's no surrender in him. You're going to have to take him down if you want him. He ain't backing up. And uh, he gets that because basically in West Virginia, we were held accountable and responsible for our actions. If you did something, you stood up and said, I'm sorry, made a mistake. And if not, you go back and do it again until you got it right. Well, Woody never gave up. He never gave up when they said, too short to get into the Marines. He didn't want to go in any other branch. He was going to the Marines. He loved that uniform. He loved that uniform. And, well, pretty soon the Marines needed him. They called him up, and he was there. Um, let me tell you how all this came about with this ship. There's a gentleman here. Where's Ron? Ron Robaleski. Ron, stand up. Right there. Ron Robaleski had an idea. He says, by God, he says, if anyone deserves a ship named after him, it's Woody Williams for what he's given to our country. And how not only after he served in the military, how he served in his retirement which was, never was a retirement, because he then served basically the rest of his life. Uh, Ron started a campaign, a one-person campaign. Thousands and thousands of signatures were sent in the Department of Navy. And then his grandson, Brent. Brent basically got a hold of me one day, and it was before the anniversary, one of the anniversaries for Iwo Jima. And they were going to go over there, and they knew that Ray Mabus was going to be there, Secretary of the Navy. So he says, hey, Joe, can you get a resolution done? And he said, we'll get this thing moving. I says, well, absolutely. I've known Woody forever. And I said, let me start on it. So I got a resolution, got it entered into it, got it delivered. They were able to talk to Ray. Being former governors, I was the governor of West Virginia at one time, and Ray was the governor of Mississippi, and governors have a certain bond. And I said, Ray, I need a favor. He said, you don't need a favor. He said, this should have been done a long time ago. And Ray took this thing and made it happen. So I'm forever grateful. And that is how this happened. And there's the person, Ron, who really never gave up, never lost that dream. It happened, Ron. It was because of Brent and the family that basically brought it and all the attention. But the Navy stepping up and doing the thing they did. No, no surprise to me this is a frontline ship. No surprise to me at all. Because he's not going to wait in the back. Woody's not going to sit in the back and wait till the war starts. He wants to make sure he's on the front of it. Uh, You've heard about Iwo Jima. You've heard about where he's come from. His parents were Lloyd and Lorena Williams. Uh, they instilled uh, the, the tough values of, of, of his toughness. He's West Virginia strong through and through. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more you don't know about Woody. When he served for the veterans after for 35 years, he came home and served in every capacity to make sure that veterans had the services that they earned that they sacrificed for and made sure that they were delivered to them. We started a motorcycle ride when I was governor a few years ago, and it was for Gold Star families. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the sacrifices you've had to endure. We wanted to have a fundraiser and raise money. Well, it's not hard. If you want to do something that truly benefits society and every person in need get a bunch of motorcycle riders together and they'll be there to do it well guess who was our first rider and who's been my rider ever since he's been in a slingshot now i was going to put him on the back he says i'd rather have that slingshot it goes a little quicker so uh, woody has rode every, about 200 miles every year we do it and we raise 60 70 80 thousand dollars and he is right there never missed one of them so you talk about west virginia strong there it is uh, let me tell you a little bit also about our state. We have 137,000 veterans, uh, and just like his fellow, uh, fellow uh, Marines, uh, each one of those benefit, uh, veterans have benefited by Woody's service. 
and they continue to do that today. Uh, as a U.S. Senator and a member of both the Veterans Affairs and Armed Service uh, Committee, which is also uh, Congresswoman Loria's same committees on the House side, and that makes us able to work together on many issues that are near and dear to each one of you. Uh, I've proudly introduced a myriad of legislations on benefit and, and on behalf of all acting service and all retired veterans, uh, because Woody told me to do it. And I didn't ever say no. Uh, so I can't tell you really how proud it is. Uh, for those who have served, God bless you. For those who haven't, I know we all feel there's a void in our life. But if you have, every, every one of us have service of some kind. You can serve this country by serving someone who has served, by always being there for them, by never stepping back, never standing down, never saying no. When you have someone that puts a uniform on, they said, listen, I'll take that fight, I'll take that bullet if I have to for your freedoms. That's what it's all about. And Woody and I were raised in an area also where the patriotism, I've always said this, West Virginians have been in every fight that this great country has ever taken on. It's a fabric of who we are. It's part of who we are. We enjoy the fights. And in fact, if there's not a good fight or a good war going on, we'll fight each other just to stay ready. Uh, we've done that many times. But I've never forgotten. I had an uncle who was uh, truly a patriot. Uh, he was a uh, Navy, uh, and he uh, was in World War II. But Woody knew him very well, A. James Mansion, Uncle Jimmy, we called him. But as a young child, he taught me every time we saw that flag and when the callers came across, he said, I want you to think about one thing. Every time you see that flag, think of this. It's only some stripes of red and white. It's only some stars on a field of blue. And it's only a little cotton flag. Does it mean anything to you? Oh, yes, it does. For beneath its folds, our people are safe on land and sea, and it stands for a land where God is still king, and his truth and his freedoms are free. So let us love it well and keep it pure as our banner of liberty. That's what this man is all about, the banner of liberty that he was willing to defend with his life and has given his life every day since then. So I can only tell you that I have never had a more of a prestigious honor to be able to be here with a person who is truly an American hero and with all our Congressional Medal and every one of you who serve. And I can say this from the bottom of my heart, God bless each and every one of you, and God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Manchin. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship's namesake, Chief Warrant Officer for Herschel Woody Williams. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have heard more about me than you need to know. This is not just about me. It's about them. It's about those who never got to come home to America. It's to the families who sacrificed more than any of us. They gave one of their own so that we could be who we are, live in a free country, have all the advantages that we have. So we want to pay tribute to those this morning. But this is a moment in history that is far beyond my comprehension. I certainly want to thank all of you for your effort, for your getting here and being cold. This couldn't happen without you. Many of us have experienced miracles in our lives. Some are very life-changing. 
This has been experienced by many of our armed forces members throughout our history. And many of those miracles occurred not just because of what they did, but because of others. I have had a great number of miracles in my life, and this is another. Sometimes it almost seems to be, uh, to be beyond reality. This commission of this ship is one of those realities that I am extremely humbled about it. The miracle that is happening today is another one that could never happen except in the great country in which we live, our America. And receiving the Medal of Honor is the top of those man-made miracles. Although divine, I believe inspired, this ship that will bear and does bear my name and will sail the seven seas is very close to the top of the miracles in my life. Ron has been introduced, but Ron had not taken the initiative had not come up with the idea, it wouldn't have happened. If it hadn't been for others, such as Senator Manchin and my family, it wouldn't have happened. In 2017, Senator Manchin took up the torch, and the rest is the history that we are experiencing this day. And I certainly want to acknowledge the Medal of Honor recipients that we have with us this morning, Joe and Jim and Kyle and Sal and <laughs> All of those. There is a brotherhood between us that doesn't exist any place else with any other people. Savalinsky, I didn't miss you. I see you. I'm grateful to all those who have the expertise to put something like this together that's going to protect our future and that's going to protect America for many years to come. And may all those who serve aboard this ship that will bear my name be safe and be proud. And may she have God's blessings for a long life of service to the greatest country on earth. It is our prayer and the prayer of millions of Americans that all wars will cease. And there will come a time when sacrifices in our armed forces will no longer be necessary. Again, thank you all for your participation, for the honor that you give to me and my family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Warrant Officer Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Secretary Gertz, I would be honored if you would now place Herschel Woody Williams in commission. On behalf of the President of the United States and for the Secretary of the Navy, I hereby place the United States ship Herschel Woody Williams in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who sail in her. Congratulations. Thank you, Secretary Gertz. Executive Officer, Voice the Colors, and Commission Pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's Company, attend. Hut. The Commission Pennant in professional National Navies began to take form late in the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the mainmast head to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the large screen as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Navigator, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS Herschel Woody Williams. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander Naval Military Personnel Command to Captain David Gray, United States Navy. Subject, Buper Orders Number 0815 of 15 August 2019. When directed by reporting senior, detached from present duty and report to USNS Herschel Woody Williams Gold Crew as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Herschel Woody Williams, report for duty as commanding officer. Captain McCarthy, I relieve you, sir. Admiral Galenus, the ship is in commission and I am in command, sir. Thank you, Admiral. I appreciate it, sir. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative, and while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have our namesake, Chief Warrant Officer Herschel W. Williams, who will pass the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Mark Maxwell from San Francisco, California. Petty Officer of the Watch is Bosun's Mate First Class Rebecca Masterson from Apple Valley, California. The Messenger of the Watch is Aviation Bosun's Mate Third Class Sidney Payne from Patascala, Ohio. And the Bosun's Mate of the Watch is Bosun's Mate First Class Jesus Arevalo from Barranquilla, Colombia. Set the watch on deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well.
Captain, the watch is set, sir. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsors, Travi and Tracy Ross, with us today. Travi and Tracy commissioned the ship in San Diego, California, on October 21st, 2017. Ladies, I would be honored if you would join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Greetings, everyone. Our family has been looking forward to this event with such excitement and anticipation. We have so much to be thankful for. As my sister and I were counting our blessings, we came up with a few and we'd like to share them with you. First, we were blessed with parents who cared deeply for us and raised us in a loving, godly home. Our father, the namesake of the USS Herschel Woody Williams has been a shining example to us, to our children, and so many other people. He has shown us how to live a life serving other people. He has demonstrated honesty, loyalty, and compassion throughout his life. The establishment of the Herschel Woody Williams Medal of Honor Foundation for Gold Star Families is a perfect example of Dad's mission in life, which is summed up in his words, the cause is greater than I. Second, we're thankful for the men and women who worked so diligently to build this magnificent ship. Their time and effort has made it possible for us to see this ship commissioned today. Third, we are blessed to have a crew willing to sacrifice their lives to protect ours. Every day they will wake up on this ship prepared to defend America, no matter the cost. And last, we are grateful to have the incredible honor of being the sponsors for the USS Herschel Woody Williams. On a personal note, I am thankful that the sponsors aren't breaking bottles for this ceremony. <clears throat> for those who missed the christening in San Diego, my sister gracefully struck the bottle one time and it immediately broke just as planned. But even though I struck my bottle exactly as we had practiced, it took six times for it to break. I'm thinking that may be a record, I'm not sure, but in all seriousness, we as sponsors do consider our relationship with this ship and the crew to be a great responsibility, and we will support them with our prayers for protection and safety as they go forth to follow our Father's motto for this ship, peace we seek, peace we keep. May God bless this ship and all who sail with her. Officers and crew of the USS Herschel Woody Williams, man our ship and bring her to life.
and gentlemen, the crew of USS Herschel Woody Williams salutes you! We are proud to serve in America's Navy. Herschel Woody Williams, ready? Two. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS Herschel Woody Williams is manned and ready, sir. Very well. Admiral Kitchener, USS Herschel Woody Williams, manned and ready and reports for duty, sir. Aye, aye, sir. General Berger, request permission to break your flag, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Executive officer, break the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Aye, aye, sir. Navigator, break the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Aye, aye, sir. Hang on, we're going to get it. Captain, the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps is flying proudly over USS Herschel Woody Williams, sir. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain David Gray, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Herschel Woody Williams. Ship's Company, parade, rest. Good morning and welcome. First, I'd like to thank the following. Our ship's namesake, Chief Warrant Officer 4, Herschel Woody Williams, United States Marine Corps, retired. Hoorah, sir. <laughs> Our lovely sponsors, Travi and Tracy Ross, daughters of Herschel Woody Williams. Our beloved matrons of honor, Miss Jane Casey and Miss Sherry Garner. Honor of medal recipients in attendance, Colonel James P. Fleming, United States Air Force, retired. Colonel Walter J. Marm, Jr., United States Army, retired. Master Chief Britt K. Slominski, United States Navy, retired. Corporal Kyle Carpenter, United States Marine Corps, retired. Former Staff Sergeant Salvatore A. Guncha, United States Army, retired. Survivor of the Battle of Iwo Jima and resident of Chesapeake, Virginia, Corporal Eddie Vincic, United States Marine Corps, retired. The Honorable Joe Manchin III, United States Senator, West Virginia. The Honorable Elaine G. Loria, United States Representative, Virginia, 2nd District. General Mark A. Milley, United States Army, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General David H. Berger, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. 
the Honorable James Gertz, Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Research, Development, and Acquisition. Lieutenant General Robert F. Hundlin, United States Marine Corps, Commanding General, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic. Rear Admiral Roy I. Kitchener, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Surface Force, U.S. Atlantic Fleet. Rear Admiral Michael A. Wetlaufer, United States Navy, Military Sealift Command. Rear Admiral William J. Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. Major General Michael Cedarholm, United States Marine Corps, Deputy Commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Command. And the many flag and general officers, senior executive service officials, distinguished guests, patriots, sponsors, and the graciously have set their time today to attend the commissioning ceremony of the Herschel Woody Williams ESB4. I'm not particularly, in particularly indecisive, uh, typically indecisive, but today I'm uncertain. Am I luckier to be the ship's namesake with the National Treasure Woody to be here with him and among these other distinguished Medal of Honor recipients, or am I more blessed to be given this opportunity to command again and blessed with this talented group of officers, chiefs, and crew to serve our country at sea one more time. One thing is certain, today, I feel like the luckiest captain in the Navy inventory. I would be remiss without recognizing those who have supported me over my course of my career, my family, my mother Lorraine, my sister Angie who could not make it, my sister Michelle and her husband Max, my brother Joshua and my nephew James, my son Logan and future daughter-in-law Katie, my daughter Nicole and other son Sebastian who could not make it today, my uncle James, my stepmother Roberta, my mother-in-law Rosaria, and my father David Sr. who passed away in 2016. And my shipmates, active and retired, the SOP, and of course the foundation and center of my life, my lovely wife Rosanna. I know I speak of all of us serving uh, these, uh, with that these jobs we perform and operations and deployments require sacrifice and support from those who too often we leave at the pier when we prepare and perform the great nation's business. I am very proud to be the first captain to join the fleet during an era of great power competition when we must be ready to fight and win. We will take this United States ship to the AFRICOM area of operations and the Sixth Fleet Operating Area and provide forward presence with the diversity of various operating capabilities, deter those who might become enemies, defend allies, and those who share our vision of freedom. And when directed, strike with the capability and resolve that would make Woody and his fellow honor, Medal of Honor recipients here today proud. In closing, I would like to thank everyone who provided me with this ship, with this crew, and the opportunity to command again. As I assume this command with her crew, we will go forth to defend and fight alongside our military teams around the world to seek the peace we want to keep. Thank you, and God bless America. Thank you, Captain Gray. Ship's Company, attend hut. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for a musical tribute to our ship's namesake, Chief Warrant Officer for Herschel Woody Williams, followed by the benediction, which will be offered by Chaplain Waite. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are profoundly thankful and grateful for such an auspicious occasion as this, one that recognizes 
the coming to life of a ship. We are thankful for her namesake, Chief Warrant Officer 4, Herschel Woody Williams, and all that he represents. We are thankful for the combined Sib Mar and military crew. We are thankful for the sacrifices of service of so many that go before us, and even those that are in harm's way this day. We pray your blessings upon this mighty warship. We pray your blessings upon this mighty crew, warriors from the sea. We pray your blessings upon the Navy and Marine Corps team. We pray your blessings upon the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps and upon this great republic in which we serve. For we ask your bountiful blessings. God bless America.